This is DJ the Prodigy Pen, and you're listening to the Ringside Report. Hey, this is Kane Velasquez, and you're listening to Ringside Report Radio. This is Chuck Liddell, and you're listening to the Ringside Report. Hi, he's Wendell Lee, the ex murder of Cuba, and you're listening to Ringside Report Radio. This is Tito Ortiz, the People's Champ, and you're listening to Ringside Report Radio. This is your eye favor, the California Kid, and you're listening to the Ringside Report. This is Randy, the Natural Couture, and you're listening to the Ringside Report. Hi, this is Vito Belfer, and you're listening to Ringside Report Radio. This is Chico Sonner, and you are listening to Ringside Report Radio. This is Jacques Fabian, and welcome to Ringside Report Radio. Hope you're ready for the next episode. Hey, hey, hey. All right, welcome to the program. It is Ringside Report Radio. I'm Dave Simon. Fred Garcia is here with me. Anthony D'Alessio in the house as well, bringing you the best of the week in MMA here over the next hour on TSN 690. We're live. Happy to be here. UFC 222 went down this past weekend, guys, and we had... A very impressive victory once again from Christiane Cyborg. Chris Cyborg defending her UFC featherweight championship. And it looks like we have a new number one contender for the men's featherweight title. Brian Ortega knocking out Frankie Edgar. The first man to finish Edgar in his entire career. Frankie Edgar, former UFC lightweight champion, a legend of the sport, has lost before, but by decision. Never by knockout or submission. And Brian Ortega, continuing his undefeated streak here in his career, improves to 14-0 and as a pro and becomes the first man to finish Frankie Edgar under the time limit, doing so in 4 minutes, 44 seconds, very first round. He's climbing the ladder if you look at in the previous fight before that, defeating Cub Swanson, now Frankie Edgar. There's pretty much only one step left to, to that ladder, and it, it, it's the champion, Max Holloway, unless you maybe throw in Jose Aldo. But, I mean, Aldo, with his recent success or lack of, is not really yeah. in the discussion. So, Brian it's, Ortega against Max Holloway. I'm down for that. You didn't see that video that was going around this week, Brian Ortega getting the phone call from Dana White telling him that he was indeed getting the featherweight title shot. Did you see that? Yeah. So, Good, great video for him, and uh, no, I, like, I mean Dana has not. You know, he's lied to fighters before, telling them exactly. they were getting title <laughs> shots, and then they don't get the title shot. But it's it a logical pre- choice. It seemed pretty genuine, and yeah, like you said, he is a logical choice to be next against Max Holloway, unless unless Conor McGregor resurfaces and decides he wants to drop back down to 145 pounds and fight Holloway again, which is a unlikely. pretty unlikely scenario, right? I think our boy uh, Anthony was high on, on uh, Brian Ortega. He was very exactly. he, he didn't remember. I picked Ortega also yeah. last week. I, <laughs> yeah. I was yeah. sorry, Ortega. Man. Maybe not as high as him, but uh, no, I, I love the young kid. He's a good young talent that you want to see, future star in this game. And uh, But he made his name, right? He he punished Edgar, and that's what, what I've been saying for a long time. Ortega is the future of the UFC. He's He's an exciting fighter. He's got awesome hair. He's got this weird hair or something from like what? This, this hair is weird, man. But you know what? Is people, it? Yeah, he's got like this like Star Trek uh, weird Star Wars sort, sort of animal uh, creature hair. Has but, a lot of uh, volume to it. He has nice hair. He's got I'll nice give him props. I got no hair. hair, so I'm jealous. <laughs> but the thing is, is that he's an exciting fighter, and we've been saying that for a long time. And and he is the star of the UFC. I think he's got all the skills, man. He's like he surprised me with his striking because I, I we all knew he was a great. A great grappler, but Frankie came in and just before he tried that counter elbow and he missed, and then the second time he connected oh, on Frankie man. perfectly. And like I'm not a Muay Thai expert, but th- that's a beautiful technique where just to counter with that elbow, yeah, short knocked elbow, him out. Boom. I-, I thought Frankie was winning the fight up until that point. What? Come it, on, well, dude. Frankie, you, you didn't think Frankie was winning no, on points going. No. Really? Up to that point, yeah, no. man. Frankie was landing way more shots. He was moving around. He was hitting Ortega more, but Ortega's shot was, you know, the one that counted, right? Listen, or, like I said the last last week, I said Ortega is going to eat a lot of shots. He's known for uh-huh. eating shots, 
But that's the thing. That's a dangerous fighter. He's not afraid to get in there. I just want to clarify what? that what? so far, Anthony, you've called Brian Ortega the future of the UFC, and you've talked about how awesome his hair is. <laughs> and I'm, you know, and we're like five minutes into the show, and you're already really excited about Brian Ortega. I mean, his I'm surprised. Hair... Yeah, you didn't mention Luke Rockhold yet, man. That's, well, we'll like, that's to, my new guy. We'll get to Rockhold. <laughs> He's your favorite guy in the world, you know. But Brian Ortega's hair, I'm looking at it right now from UFC 222, and he's got, like, cornrow things going on. Is that <laughs> is that what you were yeah. enamored with, or was yeah, it something like, else? It reminds me of Jar Jar Binks from Star Wars. He's got that weird look. You know, I've never seen a Star Wars movie Yeah, I ever. know. We know that everyone out there, give Dave some help. Fred, you haven't seen one either, right? That, I can't believe you? it. Yeah, I have. Oh, okay. My girlfriend loves Star Wars, so I had to go uh, through all of them. What's up with you guys? I can't believe this. It's a shock. Have uh, you seen The Godfather at least? Yeah, of, of course. course. But that's okay. not the same thing at no, all. No, I but... watched Scarface this afternoon. I had nothing to do. Ooh. Let's <laughs> all, all get Fred upset now. I can quote The Godfather, Anthony. <laughs> I'm a you? big Godfather fan. Yeah. Sonny. Ba- back to Brian Ortega. Thank you. Uh, you, you, you see, I was waiting like, for I'll point. agree, Frankie Edgar was probably winning that fight, but that's a Frankie Edgar fight. Frankie you? Edgar, you know, will always move a lot, mm-hmm. connect a lot of strike, and, and that was my fear a little bit. Could Frankie Ed- Edgar do that for three rounds against Ortega? But, hey, Ortega showed that not only is he a grappler, but he has the power to knock you out, so you, you got to be but, careful with him in every it, situation. It's a really good fight, too, coming up here against Max Holloway, like, that fight now, after seeing what Ortega was able to do against Frankie Edgar, it's very obvious that Ortega is now the number one contender, and that fight is is really good. That's a nice fight for the UFC to put together oh, yeah. that I think a lot of fans are going to be excited about. That's a very high-level, 145-pound bout where I'm looking at it now, and it's very hard to pick a winner. Two guys, young, in their prime, both on tremendous win streaks. Holloway has lost before, but not, not since he fought Conor McGregor several years ago. And Ortega, like I mentioned, is undefeated. That's a very good fight. I, I think I'll go last week. I was saying Ortega is a huge featherweight. And I th- Max Holloway also is a pretty big featherweight. But mm-hmm. I think Ortega will have a size advantage. And I, I'm leaning towards Ortega, but I'm a fan of both. You know, like these are young fighters that to get excited about and. If you're an MMA fan, you need to watch. This is one of the big upcoming fights. Brian Ortega is just 27 years old. He just knocked out Frankie Edgar. And you're right. He is a very big 145er. He's listed here at five foot eight. He's tall. He's mu- like muscle bound. He's thick, you know. For 145, he is pretty big. And I've even seen him this week talking about moving up to 155 at some point down the road, which yeah. makes sense. But it's kind of disappointing as well at the same time. When you're hearing a guy who's the next number one contender, so obviously at 145, talking about, yeah, 155, you know. I want to see a guy dedicated to one division and sticking to it. Yeah, at, well, at least until, but that shows confidence, right? At least, yeah, for sure. But, you know, win the title and then defend it a couple of times and then think about moving. Divisions. Yeah, you're right. Ho- hopefully he stays at featherweight, defends it. But, hey, let's go back in time, you know. When Conor McGregor won the title and then sort of vacated, we had a, a moment where we were – uh, Jose Aldo's the champion again. Uh, is is this really fun? Look, we're like what a year and a half later, and this division is is booming. It's great. It's a great division it's with exciting, yeah. this upcoming fight. So, I'm happy to see these young fighters. I think whoever wins this title, the, the match between Holloway and Ortega is a, a legit featherweight champion. Okay. If but McGregor comes back into this discussion, great. If but. if. But, but Fred, I got to stop you here. You're saying this Whoa. division is booming, right? Who, I like it. Who is the next number one contender? Who fights the winner of Ortega and Holloway? I'm waiting. Mm. <laughs> okay. Playing. Outside of these two guys, now that Frankie just got knocked out, you know, there's one less contender, one less exciting contender because we just saw him get knocked out on pay-per-view. So it's going to take a fight or two for him to become another contender for the title. Outside of these two guys, who else is there? Jeremy Stevens. Jeremy Stevens wants to fight <laughs> Jose Aldo. You see that? Look, Aldo okay, wants bo- it to happen. Booming and- might not be the the right word, but there was such a, sort of a a feeling that oh, yeah. it's boring to have Jose Aldo the champion when he lost to McGregor. And right now, I mean, the division is great. I love the whether it was Frankie Hedger, Max Holloway, Ortega. I love to see the, these guys fight, and they're all champions. They're all legit contenders. So 
Yeah, f- for sure. But, you know, I'm just saying that it's not a very deep division, so. Come on, let me do a sell job for, for Dana here, man. Why are you this trying is to do that? One of the greatest <laughs> featherweight fights of all time that's upcoming. I'm trying to find their rankings. To see you know, who, to they, the UFC's rankings, just to see who they have ranked right now at featherweight, well, and they, they have, have Max Holloway, Aldo H- Holloway, then Ortega, then Aldo, then Edgar, then Cub Swanson, Jeremy Stevens, Josh Emmett. Which is yeah, it, you know, it drops it drops off pretty quick. Yeah, you're right. Look, I I, I didn't use the right words to describe the dis- that's division. Okay. I forgive you. It's cool. Don't submit, but it's a great don't title submit. fight that's coming. But, yeah, no, it's a great title fight for sure. But I do wonder, like, what's next in the featherweight division? Who are these next guys? Well, that things are going to shake up? up, and somebody's going to come up to to the plate and get his chance. I mean, that's how it works in every division. Yeah, that's true. Yep, we'll see what happens. My Ortega friend. versus uh, Holloway, probably the next title fight at one forty five on the men's side. What about on the women's side? That was the main event, right? The title fight. Cyborg against Yana Kunitskaya. Are we ever going to see Yana Kunitskaya in a main event of a UFC show again? Well, we'll see her fight for sure. We'll see her fight. Will she have her main event? That was her first UFC fight. She was a former Invicta Bantamweight champion. I didn't think that that was the fight to make for Cyborg, but of course it was like a last-minute fight to save a pay-per-view. And Cyborg really making extremely quick work. Of her opponent there, three minutes, 25 seconds. It was a cyborg tornado in the main event. For sure, I, I agree with you. Uh, you know, she's cyborg is at another league altogether, but she's she wasn't fighting someone that wasn't recognized or didn't have like uh, true credentials. Um, and and at one point, like the whole crowd like was like ooing and owing when when she got mounted like she took her back and everybody thought she was going to get choked out so cyborg at one point for a very brief moment for a brief but the, the, what was interesting about that like i said is that cyborg is so strong and so confident that she actually smiled towards like the camera and says i'm just going to peel her off like a banana peel of course and she did and and, and i'm was done and i'm watching that and i'm saying yeah 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 but, you know cyborg's going to get you off cyborg's getting to her feet and cyborg's going to punch you in the face this is not going to last and you could see Cyborg was calm, and she was like, yeah, okay. yeah, well, Whatever you're going to do here, I'm getting you off of me, but Yana and I'm going to finish you. But Yana what? was in shape, right? She wasn't. She came into that fight looking good. why is it that Cyborg's I dominance guess. is not appreciated like other guy, guys in the because, past? Well, here's the thing, and this is my complaint from last week, is that the last Cyborg fight we saw was against Holly Holm, former UFC champion, a big name, the first fighter to beat Ronda Rousey. There's all of that with Holly Holm. But then... You come on to the next Cyborg fight, and it's a drop-off. It's somebody that you've never heard of who's making her UFC debut. And I thought that the UFC was going to turn it around by making Amanda Nunez Cyborg's next opponent because, you know, Yana may be the Invicta champion at 135, but Amanda Nunez is the UFC champion at 135, and it'll be far more compelling to see her jump up to 145 and challenge Cyborg. So Dana White said after the fight, that was what they were going to do. At the press conference, that's what he said. And then a few days later, what does the UFC announce? It's going to be Amanda Nunez against Raquel Pennington mm-hmm. to what? headline UFC 224. Which makes sense, and right? And this one's going to be in May. Rio de Janeiro on May the 12th. But, I mean, you know- Cyborg finished her opponent very quickly. She came out of it with no damage. I don't understand why Cyborg can't turn around and fight Amanda Nunez well, in the it, main event of this Brazil it, pay-per-view. Is that the reason right now is that Cyborg is not willing to fight? I don't know, I don't know what the reason that. is. No, she did say that. Is she that said, what Cyborg said? Yeah, she said she didn't want to fight, but there, it's more than that because she's probably been told by Dana, first of all, everything is about money, right? So let's think about it. If you put that, like, that's a... that's. Uh, that's going to be a big fight. So you got to build the hype in the UFC. We we need to wait. We need to wait. We can't see that fight yet. And uh, they're going to fight at some point. And I think they're going to fight at some point, maybe this year, but it won't happen like this summer. I think it's going to be one of these fights that we're going to see around New Year's. That's going to be the big showcase fight. Like a big card. It has to saying. be a big card. And the thing yeah. is that we people still have to see Cyborg develop. They, they love her. This last fight, even though she destroyed Yana, people got to see like, oh, my God. This woman hits hard. Like, she can knock out a guy no problem. She's got heavy hands, and I wouldn't want to get hit by her. I'll tell you that right now. Anthony, but the thing, that is if people saw her. 
They saw her. They and know her. You know, her name is coming just as strong as Ronda Rousey now. This, man. No. Oh, no. Come oh, on, no. guys. Oh, no, People no, no, know no, Cyborg. No, it's a one-name that, word, man. Crazy. Cyborg. Come Popeye. Cyborg. Come on. Come what are you on. talking about? Popeye. There's not a There's not a single <laughs> other female. The only, the only on, other guys. athlete in the oh. UFC to have Ronda Rousey, like, leverage of name is Conor McGregor. I mean, yeah. Ronda Rousey was at another level as far as marketing and well, all that. When's the last time Wait. you saw Cyborg on Jimmy Kimmel? She has a little bit of a language barrier. That's true. Let's uh-huh. just think about it. But on Brazil national television, I'm sure she's there all the time. Yeah. But when's the last time you watched Brazil national television? But that is my whole point from the beginning: <laughs> is wh- why isn't Cyborg appreciated no. as as a Listen. dominant champion? She's and you know maybe what? lacking a little bit of charisma and all that. But look, she is appreciated. I appreciate her. I think she's a great fighter, but she's not Ronda Rousey. She's not gonna Dave. She's gonna translate. Into but I mean, she's gonna she's as dominant. No. She she's will. as dominant that Anderson Silva was yeah. or, or Fedor Emelianenko. So why isn't she getting that level of uh, praise? I'll tell well, you why. I'll tell you why. Anthony, tell you. Anthony you. let me no, explain go, it. Go, go. All right. I want to hear this. It's a very easy answer, Fred. What is common with Fedor, with Anderson Silva, with Cyborg, with a lot of great fighters? Well, let's just say them. Okay. English is not their first language. Fedor is not speaking English at all. Anderson is barely speaking English, speaking through a translator. Cyborg is barely speaking English, speaking through a translator. If you're not speaking English, the UFC is an American company. True. You know, 80% of their events are held in the U.S. If you're not speaking English, you're not going to translate into a big star. And if English is not your first language and you can't communicate fluently in English where you're an exciting speaker like Conor McGregor or... You know, even Ronda Rousey, who had her persona, or Brock Lesnar, or somebody like that, it doesn't seem to be working with the UFC. It's going to work to a certain level, for sure, but it's not going to be a Conor or a Ronda. Yeah. So then, like, okay, like, it's not like George George was able to succeed, uh, but his English improved very, very much, and George never, ever spoke through a translator. Well, sometimes he needed to, but other than uh, that, very, maybe very, you know, very early I on, know. Anthony, I, I don't. But I've George covered is, George St. Pierre for many, many no. years, okay, and I never, ever saw him speak through a translator. This man spoke French. No, he yeah. spoke English all the time. Never had he sp- spoken French and then had somebody translate his words for him. That never happened. You but, ever see GSP do that, Fred? I don't think so. But if we go go back to Cyborg, I'll say another thing that's maybe hurting her right now is is the fact that the UFC itself doesn't seem to really believe in the featherweight division on on the female side. Because if I'm looking at the rankings, they don't even have rankings for the featherweights. (laughs) Right now, she she just faced the bantamweight champion from another organization. Mm -hmm. So, like, the whole division is lacking a little bit of of buzz, of of, uh, publicity. But... As far as a great dominant champion, Cyborg is up there, and the, the UFC should promote her like just like they were promoting Anderson Silva back in the days and things like that. Like, she's that type of talent. The UFC's featherweight division consists of four fighters currently, officially on their roster. Four fighters, and Cyborg has beat two of them, and one of them is Cyborg. So you do the math. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Who's left? Megan Anderson. You're next. Mm. Megan Anderson is the fight that should have been happening a long time ago. Megan Anderson is the Invicta. Wait for it. 145-pound champion. We could actually stop throwing Bantamweight champions at Cyborg and put her in there against somebody her own size who's also a champion. Why do these Invicta Bantamweight champions like Tanya Evinger and Yana Kunitskaya and UFC Bantamweight champion like Holly Holm and even Amanda Nunez, why are we throwing Bantamweights at Cyborg? She's a featherweight. I mean, she's so dominant. She's amazing. And she has the advantage of being a bigger fighter as well. It it doesn't make any sense. And it's because there's just... The talent isn't out there. There's Cyborg, and then there's the just everybody else. The talent's not there, else. but the UFC also doesn't invest in in the division. There should be some type of like. If, Where's the Ultimate Fighter if, at if, featherweight? That, and also if nobody, if those names you're saying aren't fighting Cyborg, maybe the UFC are not you know throwing enough money to their way. Because I mean these these are professional fighters that should want to 
hope to be at the top of the level. So, I mean, if if you're being told you got a chance against a champion, what is stopping you? Maybe there's not enough of a reward out there? I'm not sure. I'm just throwing ideas. I don't know. But if you think about the UFC and how they've promoted every other women's division, 115 pound, they had a, a season of the Ultimate Fighter to crown a champion. They had a whole TV series based around the division mm-hmm. with 16 women on the show that you could get to know that could then become stars in a division, right? They did the same thing just recently with the 125-pound division that they just introduced for the women. And when Ronda was just ca- coming in, they had a season of The Ultimate Fighter with 135 women and 135 men that Ronda and Misha Tate coached. The featherweights have not had an Ultimate Fighter. They're the only women's division in the UFC that hasn't been promoted with their own TV show. What's that about? Maybe it's going to happen. We don't know. Does it look like it's happening? It's not going to happen right now, but uh, you know what? It's not happening. It's not happening now. (laughs) It's not happening, Anthony. But why has it not happened? Like for these two other two other divisions that the UFC has introduced, 115 and 125, they did a season of the Ultimate Fighter that was a tournament to crown a champion at the end. So you got to know 16 fighters in that division on TV. You know who they are. You know their stories. You know how they fight. And then at the end, you see them fight in the tournament. But Cyborg, she's just one woman in a division that they don't really have. It's Cyborg, and they bring in whoever's Cyborg's tomato can opponent to get smashed up by Cyborg. And then it's, uh, I guess, we'll try to find... Somebody else will fight Cyborg. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of what they do with Gabby Garcia in Japan. Mm -hmm. Like Gabby Garcia, if you don't know and you don't watch Japanese MMA, she's just a giant Brazilian woman who just smashes these uh, Japanese women or, or sometimes Tongan. It was a Tongan woman, I think, that she fought. But like women that are older than her, that are pro wrestlers, that really have no business in fighting. And Gabby Garcia is like a legit black belt in jiu-jitsu and she's super strong and big. And it's just like the Gabby Garcia show, and they bring in some opponent for her. And that's what they're doing with Cyborg in the UFC right now. It's not a real division. It's not legitimate. And that's why this past Saturday, the pay-per-view was just kind of like, ugh, yeah. This is what we're seeing, the Cyborg show. I've seen the Cyborg show for many years, and it's okay, but this is the UFC. I want to see competition. It's supposed to be the top level of the sport, is it not? Well, you could only beat who's put in front of you, so I'm not going to put that on Cyborg or... But yeah, the UFC need to invest in the division. I I would agree. An ultimate fighter, Dana, his show there, looking for a fight. Try to find the next featherweight female fighter out there. Do something, yeah, Dana. Good idea. That's a good idea. Are Get they to looking? work. Are they looking? Anthony, I know you're very excited about Mackenzie Dern. She yep. got a decision victory, a split decision. She didn't look that good. What? She, she Come did not, on. She did Guys, not look that good. Did you watch good. the same fight that I did? Her striking was kind of awful. What? What are you? Well, okay. Her head movement Listen, was, yeah, like she was more terrible. Of a, Listen. She didn't look great. But you know what? She, like, she walked in there, and she wasn't afraid to exchange punches. She's not a striker, that's for sure. But she went in there. She's not afraid to get hit. That, that says a lot. I, I thought I mean, the fight was exciting. I'd like to see her against Joanna just for fun to see if she brings it to the ground. Because I think <clears throat> like she showed similar problems that a lot of jiu-jitsu experts will have is bringing the fight to the ground in MMA. And I think that could be an issue yeah. for her in the future. But uh, no, look, but she, she had a nice feet, win. Her opponent was six feet tall. She was like towering her. It's not as easy to bring someone down when Good they're point. up against the cage. But when she did bring her down... It was almost like good night, and it was a punishment. So the fight, in my opinion, was like Mackenzie Dern was like doing it was, it was phenomenal. I thought it was a great fight. Uh, she was exchanging. Yeah, she's choppy on some of her punches, but she's not afraid to go in to take a punch, which says a lot. She's not afraid. Yeah, but once of, she gets hit for real, we'll yeah, see but if she she's threw, still she not threw, afraid. But she threw some heavy hands. Yeah, the fight think, was some heavy hands that were thrown. I think a lot of people were just expecting a submission. And, and she she almost got it at the end. If she would have had like maybe almost. a minute more, yeah. it was done. We I'll know go that. back to my point where she needs to work on that wrestling to to be able to yeah, go to the Yeah, I ground. agree with you because the the problem with her is you're absolutely right. Like when a it doesn't matter if it's the women's division or the men's division. When someone is a taller fighter and they're standing like a tower, it's hard to pull that person down unless you you hook his legs or you know you do some kind of a sweep, a judo sweep. Remember, it's hard, but. You're right. She needs to polish her wrestling to pull someone away from the cage. 
R- remember that dominance of Ronda Rousey when when she had her opponent to the ground, we would expect the arm bar right away. So Mackenzie Dern, she needs to work on her her takedowns. And yeah, I, I agree. On the once it's on the ground, she's definitely the better fighter in the division. So sh- the potential is there. But, but I, I just want her to yeah, work her stri- on certain aspects. But her striking was there too. Fred, it was there. Like no. it was there. It wasn't right. great, but it was there. She wasn't afraid to exchange, and that says a big thing because she's going to get better and better as time goes on. Chris, it's Levin harder to ch- was never Listen, afraid to exchange. And no, but it's, what it's with easier him. To, to 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 get someone to do better stand up than it is to do jujitsu. Jujitsu, if you don't have jujitsu, you're not going to learn it in three weeks, three months. You know, not yeah, a but year. we've seen a lot of people with excellent jujitsu have no success in MMA. It happens, sure, absolutely, right? absolutely. So but we'll see what happens with Mackenzie Dern. She got a victory. You know, she won a split decision, so that's good for her. And she's just 24 years old, so she's got time to improve that striking and become a well-rounded mixed martial artist, right? Listen, and the UFC uh, wants her to to be a face for sure. There's no doubt about it. You know, she's she's on like Sports Illustrated and all that. That's for sure. Um, Sean O'Malley got a victory over Andre Sukham. I don't know what his name is. Sukhamat, what is it? Sukhamtat. Sukhamtat? Sukhamtat. Whatever. So O'Malley looked pretty good, right? People were uh, impressed with him. I-, I thought he had some nice skills, good striking <laughs> ability. He improves to 10-0 and 0 now. And uh, he, like, broke his foot or something. Like, he busted his ankle in the third round. He was dominant in the first two rounds, but then the third round... He wasn't able to finish the deal. He was nearly taken out of the fight, right? I mean, that was a pretty bad injury. He couldn't really stand up. Joe Rogan did the interview <laughs> with him lying down afterwards <laughs> as he was named the winner by unanimous decision. He won the first two rounds for sure. The last round, not so much because he couldn't really walk. He just kind of sat on his back and hoped for the best. You, you know... I'm happy that uh, he's a young fighter, a new star that people are are gravitating around. You know, they want to see him fight. So I want to see him fight also. I just want to see him, like, get an upgrade in competition before I I start believing the hype. But, yeah, he's he's a fun fighter, great striker, good style of uh, quickness and and all that. So he's a guy to keep an eye on. Let's just get a a better opponent. I I don't really have a name to throw out there, but... uh, yeah, no. but but it made the card exciting. It was an yeah, exciting no, he's card. He's a fun fighter. You know, the, the bottom line is is that people have to get excited, and that was a fight that people got excited. I liked it, and I give the guy credit. Yeah, but I give the guy credit. It for was a fighting. good. It was a good fight for sure. I thought the the last three fights on the card were fun to watch. You know, especially Ortega how about and Edgar, it, and then how, Cyborg and Yana because they finished so quickly. But then you had Arlovsky and Stefan Struve. I did not think that that was a very good fight. That was kind of rough to watch. Arlovsky winning a decision over Struve. He didn't look so good. He didn't. N- look neither guy good. looks very good. Yeah, he doesn't have like something's missing on but, Arlovsky. But they're heavyweights, so they'll get another fight for sure. Yeah, uh, both for of sure. them. All right. Tyron Woodley says he's training Floyd Mayweather. What is he training him for? I don't know. He's what is a or what, what is going on? Yeah, it's strange. Strange stuff. Conor McGregor, what is he doing? What is Floyd Mayweather training for with Tyron Woodley? We're going to try and tackle that when we come back. We'll also tell you about UFC 225 going down in June in Chicago. Some big fights announced and some big fights rumored. It's Ringside Report Radio here on TSN 690. This is Mike Quickswick, and you are listening to Ringside Report. Hi, I'm Alex Garcia, and you're listening to Ringside Report Radio. This is Robbie Lawler, and you're listening to Ringside Report Radio. This is Roy McDonald, and you're listening to Ringside Report Radio. This is Chad Mendes, you're listening to Ringside Report Radio. Hello, this is the notorious Conor McGregor, and you are listening to Ringside Report Radio. All right, welcome back. It is Ringside Report Radio. I'm Dave Simon. Fred Garcia here with me. Anthony D'Alessio as well. And Cousin Marco is here as well. What's up, Cousin Marco? Cousin Marco is always here just hanging with Anthony. Anthony brings his own crew. We've never revealed that on the show, but Anthony always brings an entourage. No matter where he goes, he's always got people with him. Cousin Marco always makes a trip down on Friday nights. That, so. That's how it is when you're a high-level fighter, I guess. That's right, like you, Anthony. You got your you got your posse. That's it, exactly. Anthony's got a whole crew. Speaking of high level fighters with gigantic posses, <laughs> Floyd Mayweather uh, apparently 
says the UFC welterweight champion Tyron Woodley. He says Mayweather is training for an MMA fight in the UFC, and uh, he says he's training with him. Tyron Woodley this week saying, I think on his TMZ show, he's got some sort of TMZ sports show. He says that he's training or will start to train Mayweather for his UFC debut. So just when you thought the Mayweather to the UFC talk was over, here comes Tyron Woodley to fire it up all over again. (laughs) You know what? I I think it's a good move. I think Tyron Woodley is going to be great for Mayweather. They get along. They love basketball. They do all kinds of stuff together. And I heard him talking. I mean, Woodley knows his game. And you know what he said? He says, I can train Mayweather within two to three weeks on how to stop kicks. And, like, all defensive. He doesn't have to be offensive. All he has to do is know how to stop the kicks, know how to stop the takedowns, and just keep jabbing away because he's the best fighter in the world. And you know what? He, He could pull something like that off. He doesn't have to learn how to be offensive, learn how to be defensive. I, I wish I had the numbers in front of me because I checked it out a couple of weeks ago. But if you look at Conor McGregor's record, like in, in his UFC career, I think he attempted something like only four or five takedowns. Conor McGregor doesn't really shoot for, for takedowns. No, he does not. And, and that's why he, when he shot for that takedown against Nate Diaz, yeah, exactly. it was like, <laughs> oh, that was a desperation move. Why is he shooting for a takedown? Oh, because he, he's he's done. So as Anthony just said, if if Floyd could learn enough wrestling defense and enough you know, striking defense that involves kicks, mm-hmm. who knows? We might see Floyd. Good, I want to see it. I want you guys to keep talking like this. I want you guys to continue to convince yourselves that Floyd Mayweather has a chance in the UFC because I look forward to collecting the money from the bets that I'll be making against you. Mayweather's going to get crushed. You can't learn to defend kicks in three weeks. That's ludicrous. <laughs> it's an insult to kicking. You're insulting Tyrone. That's that's bad, Dave. Seriously, he's listening probably. Look, Look if, you know what? if you needed Whatever, some... Whatever, Tyron. You're talking nonsense and you know it. If you needed somebody, like Floyd is known as a boring boxer. If you needed somebody to be, to help you become a boring MMA fighter that's successful, I guess, you know, hire Tyron Woodley. Oh, my goodness. But Fred is firing shots right now. That's Fred Garcia at Freddy MMA on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. But ba- back to, to Floyd. I mean, look, he, enough wrestling defense just to make this fight, like, seem legit. Of course, Conor McGregor is going to win an M- MMA cage. It'd be ridiculous if he, if he didn't. Okay. I want to see it. I what about see this, it. though? What about this? What if Floyd Mayweather, say Woodley can train him to, to defend kicks in three weeks? I've got a date in mind. It's UFC 225 on June the 9th. It's in Chicago, Illinois. And you know Too who close. the you know who, no. 3 weeks he said, okay? June 9th <laughs> is way more than 3 weeks away. If Woodley's legit, let's get Mayweather in there June 9th in Chicago with CM Punk. That would be awesome. That that's the fight. And I think yeah, I mean with Woodley as his coach, I think that could be a possibility. And Absolutely. Woodley has trained at the Duke Rufus Academy with CM Punk. So he knows him. So there's the extra element of, uh, you know, a former teammate going to train the enemy. But, I mean, if Floyd is coming to MMA to fight, you, you want the full promotion. Is June really logical? Like, you know, you want you want to milk everything out of Floyd coming to MMA. True. So, like, I would more expect maybe a Nagus fight, something like that. And yeah. I'll keep the name of Conor McGregor because I – Yes, CM Punk is a draw. Conor McGregor is another type of draw. And the CM Punk thing, I'm ma- mostly throwing out selfishly because I think it would be cool, and it's a fight that I want to see. But I did hear from a guy who was watching my Elimination Chamber post show. I was on uh, Periscope talking about the Chamber, right, the WWE Chamber, I guess a week ago or a couple weeks ago, and a guy who trains with CM Punk was watching me. And he was saying, yeah, Punk is not fighting Floyd Mayweather, but he is training for a fight. So why? Punk is in training. But why wouldn't he fight? Like, what was his reasoning behind that? Like, why? Yeah. CM Punk is like CM Punk. Why? Yeah, why? Like, why would he think that? Why wouldn't he fight Floyd Mayweather? Yeah. I don't know, because that fight is just not happening as far as well, Punk is for, for as CM far Punk's as Punk size is, is an issue, I think, because he, he, well, fought at, he fought at 170, and that's where it becomes interesting is if Floyd fights an MMA, if I'm Floyd, I'm making Connor drop to 145. I'm tell, Like, Floyd in boxing has fought most of his career around 145, 147. I think he fought once at 154 against Canelo. Right. So 
if I'm Floyd and I'm coming to MMA, I'm telling Connor, I want you to drop the weight. We need to do this at 145. Yeah, and I, I think that that is a possibility for Connor to to make it happen because there's so much money there. F- Floyd needs an it MMA consultant. Like I'm throwing my name out there. Come on, Floyd. Yeah, <laughs> hire Fred. He's he'll do it for cheap. Only a hundred grand a day. But he's got Tyrone. Seriously. Yeah, well, Tyrone, 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 Tyrone needs an MMA consultant yeah, exactly. as well. How uh, not to be boring? How how to you know pick your fights a little bit wiser? This is a circus, but you know what? What I'd like to see, really, if it's going to go circus crazy, let's put like Tyson in like the corner of McGregor and turn it into a pure circus. Mike Tyson? Mike Tyson, man. No, Iron Mike, man. I don't think so. Why not? As a boxing consultant? For sure. I think that fight is really unfair for Floyd Mayweather. Fighting McGregor in MMA, I think he gets completely smashed. Well, I mean... It, That's it's... why uh, Punk would be better, because with Punk, you think maybe Floyd's got a chance. Look, what Tyrone said is that what Mayweather is doing is he's training, and he's not looking at just one fight in MMA. He's, he says he's going to have several fights in MMA. What I think should be done is he yeah. fights he fights Connor. If he loses to Connor, he'll have a second fight with CM Punk, and everybody will still come out and see that. But don't you think that all of this is really just Tyron Woodley talking so that people talk about Tyron Woodley? No, I think he's serious. Because he's saying, hey, Floyd Mayweather, and then all of a sudden people are talking about Tyron Woodley. Who else can Woodley talk about where people are going to talk about him? Well, it'd be sad if Tyron Woodley would just, like, invent this story to, to get attention. But, but I mean, I guess if you're boring. Look. <laughs> when you've no, got but- a man like Fred calling you boring on radio, I mean, that is crazy, you know? That's some intense feelings from MMA fans that are just not makes that you, interested makes in Makes you. you maybe invent stories like, hey, I know Floyd. When yeah, that might not be true. No, no for sure. Just, just no. joking out. Who is Woodley's next opponent? He's the champion at 170 pounds. Who's he fighting next? George St. Pierre this week basically said it's not worth his time to fight Tyron Woodley. That's how important Tyron Woodley is. GSP's like, yeah, I could probably beat him, but like, uh, who cares? You know, what's the point? Well, why not? So Woodley's got to be like, hey, 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 I know Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> Pay attention to me. Tyron needs to come to Montreal, stock uh, GSP, you know, show up at You a, better hope he doesn't come to Montreal after everything you've said so far. That's what are it. you talking about? <laughs> are you crazy? You don't want this guy anywhere near you. Tyron, I'm going sorry, after Tyron. Fred, man. This is awesome. I can't wait. I'm on Tyron's side. Get the side. camera ready, man. I got to see this. I think he's Put him best. in your guard, Fred. That's it. It's done. Oh, okay. I'm going the Master Ken route <laughs> to get out of any uh, you realize, submission. You realize Tyron Woodley beat Damian Maya, right? Yeah. I think yeah. Fred's jiu-jitsu is going to be in some trouble oh, there against I'm tapping. Woodley. I'm yeah, tapping. Tap right away. Get that's, Tyson, man. That's a smart move. Uh, okay, so that fight, uh, Woodley training Mayweather. I don't know what's going to happen there. It may all be publicity. I'm still not fully buying it. Conor McGregor on his side, he's like feuding with 50 Cent on Twitter or something. That was funny. Yeah, there's, there's like a whole feud going on. Going on. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. It's a bit much. Like 50 said some things about uh, white people having no athleticism. Yeah. And then Connor said some really crude things on International Women's Day about 50 Cent. Yeah. It was <laughs> like, it was strangely derogatory. Like it wasn't outright offensive, but it kind of was. I don't even want to repeat it. Like that's how bad it got with Connor this week. The best thing Connor did this week was that Burger King commercial. Did that you see awesome. that? That was awesome. Yeah. The spicy chicken. But wait, that makes me think of Did about you see something. that, Fred? You did not see it? It's you got to check that out. I read about it. No, I put it on my Twitter feed, at Dave Simon MMA. Go check it out after the show. But you know what? What makes me wonder is this, is that Burger King is a huge sponsor of Bellator. Is there anything, like, maybe masking behind no, that? No. I was, like, really nervous. When I saw that, I'm like, wait no. a sec. Is McGregor, like, no. thinking about going to Bellator? Because Burger King Just is stop Bellator. Now. No. Hey, Just stop. What Burger, kind of Burger King is not Bellator. Sir- Be- Burger King's a, a burger joint that yeah, pays all over for Bellator. commercials. Yeah, all over Bellator. Come on, I, I got nervous there. I'm like, what's going on here? But anyways, we'll see. Really? Come no, on, man. no, Listen. don't say. But anyways, we'll see. Like this is a story to follow. We, uh, is McGregor now with Bellator because he's doing a commercial <laughs> for Burger King? It's so ludicrous. I'm telling you, man. Something is like nerved me out on that commercial. Something nerved you out. Something nerved me out, man. Well, I okay. It makes well, me want to go to Burger King right after we're, we're going to leave the show. If you were nerved out, that actually sounds delicious. It does, eh? Can we go to a Burger big King after the show? I'm hungry. Sponsored by. Burger King, Ringside I mean, Report if, Radio. If they're giving us free burgers, 
Yeah, get on that, Anthony. Is there yeah, a Burger King that. out there <laughs> that wants to give us burgers? <laughs> we um, need them, man. UFC 225, I was talking about that show in June. They added a very nice heavyweight fight. Alistair Overeem versus Curtis Blades, official for that card. How you like that? And you know what the rumored main event for that show is? Uh, Robert Whitaker versus Yoel Romero for the UFC middleweight title. That could be a very good pay-per-view. You already have uh, Overeem and Blades, like I mentioned. Joseph Benavidez is going to fight Sergio Pettis. And Claudia Gadelia will take on Carla Esparza, June 9th in Chicago. It's a good pay-per-view right there. I think that Romero Whitaker is almost official. Like, I was reading it. Like, I, it's almost a, a done deal. So. It's, like, almost a done deal, but the UFC hasn't put it out there and said it's happening yet. So that, that's going to be a great fight card. That Talk about another title fight that's very interesting. I want to see Yoel Romero and Robert Whitaker fight again. Yeah, I think that's a really good fight. And that's the fight that you have to make at middleweight right now, right? Those are the I two mean, number one guys. Yeah, and you, you got to be a fan of both of these guys. They're Like, Yoel Romero f- physically is in another dimension, and uh, Robert Whitaker has been getting big wins against everybody that's been put in front of him. So I want to see that. There is no UFC fight card this weekend. NCAA tournament in the States. If you look in the next month, there's only one fight card, and it's next week. And then we go all the way to April because in in the USA, there's the NCAA basketball tournament that's starting, and they're taking over a, a lot of the days. You know, they got games going every Saturday. So I think, my opinion here, I think the UFC plans in advance these type of dates, and they try not to go against big events such as the basketball tournament. Probably some smart thinking for the UFC, right? Exactly. They're going to do, but I guess it's next Saturday afternoon in England. Fabricio Verdum versus Alexander Volkov in the main event. It's a fight pass card, only on fight pass, even the main event. Yep. Did you see Verdum? Verdum said he wanted to be a pro wrestler. He did? People said, Verdum kind of said like WWE, but he didn't mean WWE. He meant like doing Lucha Libre in in, uh, Mexico. (laughs) I don't understand how a guy as big as Verdum, as old as he is, is going to be able to do Lucha Libre. Like those guys are flipping around doing all sorts of crazy stuff. I don't understand how Fabricio Verdum at 40 years of age is going to take up pro wrestling and be able to do it. But hey, man, all the power to him. A lot of MMA fighters want to become pro wrestlers these days. Have you noticed that? Yeah, I think Verdum might have the charisma. I have no clue about his in-ring ability. Yeah. But, uh, you know, he's one of those guys. He's a little bit funny, has an edge to him. I could see him being turning, starting off as a good guy and all of a sudden turning heel, throwing a boomerang at somebody. <laughs> but just don't eat the Mexican meat, right? Like Canelo. So if right. he's going to go that way, don't eat the meat. Don't eat the beef. There you go. We're going to get to Canelo and what happened to him. Canelo Alvarez, a boxer, failing a drug test this week. A pretty big deal in the boxing world. We'll mention that as well. But Fabricio Verdum in wrestling, that's interesting. It's interesting. Like I said, a lot of MMA fighters want to be wrestlers. Ronda Rousey has been doing a very good job on Monday Night Raw. She's on Raw every week. Every Monday night, it's Monday Night Ronda. She'll be back in the UFC, believe me. I think so, too. Brock Lesnar's coming back. It's Ringside Report Radio. We're coming back as well. And Anthony will get to gush about his favorite fighter <laughs> taking on Alexander Gustafson. Stay with us. Hey, John, this is Chris Weidman, and welcome to Ringside Report Radio. Hi, this is Roy Pickendry Nelson, and you're listening to Ringside Report Radio. This is still Mr. Wonderful Davis, and you're listening to Ringside Report Radio. Hi, this is Mark Munoz, and you're listening to Ringside Report Radio since 2006. Welcome back. It is Ringside Report Radio. I am Dave Simon. Fred Garcia and Anthony D'Alessio here with me. Here with you every Friday night on TSN 690. I'll be back tomorrow night with Johnny North for Wrestling Uncensored, the pro wrestling show every Saturday here on TSN 690. Got you covered for everything in a boxing ring and MMA octagon or the pro wrestling ring as well or the i got you scene. all covered what are you saying anthony i said the music scene as well you were talking about 50 cent uh all these guys we, we talk about everything anthony just derailing the show as usual for him <laughs> what is he doing no man I, that's exactly what we're let me go about. back no, to mma man. you know you know who we did mention on that last fight card that had a nice fight i thought was 
Ketlin Vieira, Holy which beating was the, uh, Kadzingano. Yeah, exactly. It was the first time I really noticed her, and uh, she had a good performance. I mean, she's a, a girl to watch in the division, has good jiu-jitsu, good big size ba- bantamweight. So uh, I'm interested to seeing her have a, her next MMA fight. Yeah, she looked pretty good at UFC 222. UFC 223, the next big pay-per-view. You know, there's only two U- one UFC show in between then, right? We were talking about that Verdun Volkov show before the break. Uh, but then after that, it's April 7th, UFC 223 in Brooklyn, which is the big one. You've got Habib Nurmagomedov taking on Tony Ferguson, and then Rose Namajunas against Joanna Jędrzejczyk in the rematch. So that is the one that I'm looking forward to. I know the one Anthony's looking forward to is Luke Rockhold against Alexander Gustafsson. These guys have been going back on social media for weeks now, and it seems like they are going to set up some sort of fight. Rockhold is dead set on moving up from 185 to the 205 light heavyweight division to fight Gustafsson, who's a former number one contender. You know, he fought for the title a couple of times against both Jones and Daniel Cormier, came up on the losing end of very close decisions, and now he looks like he's going to take on former Cormier training partner Luke Rockhold. And Anthony, I know you love Rockhold. What do you think his chances are against the very tough Swede Alexander Gustafsson? That's not an easy fight for Rockhold. Absolutely, it's not an easy fight, but I don't think it's going to happen. I think before it gets to Gustafsson, it's going to be like Bisping. I mean, that's the fight that he should be focusing on. I think that's what's going to happen. I think it's a retirement fight for, for Bisping. Uh, I'm more excited to see that happening than, than Alexander. It's, Why it's you want to do that to Bisping for his retirement? Well, well, he he called it. He wants it. He they wants have that been fight. talking like yeah. they want to fight each other, and that fight could happen at light heavyweight as well. But I'm more interested in the Gustafsson fight. I don't want to see Bisping fight Rockhold again. I'd rather see Bisping fight, uh, you know, Machida or Vitor or something like that one more time. One of the older guys. Rockhold is still, you know, in his prime, and Bisping's talking about a retirement fight. Although I did see Rockhold say. That he wants to fight Bisping again, and if he loses, he would retire. Yeah. <laughs> which would be a super premature retirement for Luke Rockhold. How old is Rockhold? Like 33 or something? He's still, you know, got a lot of fighting years going forward. Yeah, he's exactly 33 years old. I, I wonder if there's a, an out. Like, you know, in WWE, they always had these retirement matchups, yeah. like uh, Ult- Ultimate Warrior and Macho Man, but... Could he come back well, after? I'm sure that if he did lose to Bisping and he wanted to keep fighting, the UFC wouldn't be like, no, 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 you, you're done. Uh, you have to go away th- now. Those things are not set in stone. No. Those do not actually work out. Uh, how about Canelo Alvarez failing a voluntary anti-doping test for Clint Buterol? Uh, and Clint Buterol uh, could be used with anabolic steroids to reduce body fat and promote the growth of skeletal muscle. So it's a performance-enhancing drug. And Canelo, uh, one of the top names in boxing, was supposed to fight Gennady Golovkin on May the 5th. And at this point, the fight is still on. We were trying to get Matt Kasava on. Uh, Matt and I were going back and forth. He's our boxing analyst, but uh, he's out of cell phone range tonight. So we'll probably get him on in the next couple of weeks to talk about this and the uh, Deontay Wilder fight. I don't know if you guys caught that, but I heard it was uh, excellent. I saw a few highlights. I still haven't caught the whole fight, but uh, I heard that that was a very good fight, so we'll try and get Matt to cover that. But uh, Canelo Alvarez testing positive for clenbuterol, and he's claiming that it is tainted meat. And Anthony believes him 100%, right? Well, I mean, if he ate the whole cow, I would believe him. But the thing is is that, I mean, it's possible, like, over... A certain period of time that it can show up in like results but like to actually say that it just happened because he ate like a steak and he has it in his body it's hard to believe i mean he had to eat the whole cow and that didn't happen really but well i, I would I imagine know, from what i'm seeing that you know some people have claimed that it is tainted meat and it was you know very trace amounts of clenbuterol in his system and people have used the tainted meat defense and have got away without suspension in the past but some people have used it and been suspended so it really kind of depends on what kind of evidence you can present uh, for your case when you do go in front of somebody to get disciplined well the narrative i'm feeling that this story is getting that this fight is still gonna happen i feel uh, they're they're gonna still license canelo to fight golovkin uh, in may i think it is on may 5th so I, i i i say it's still gonna happen there's too much money involved 
like uh, Dave just said, it's you know levels that are maybe not that high. A lot of people have questioned them. They're f gonna, they're going to figure out a way now. Do the public accept the excuse of tainted meat? Hey, it's everybody's decision at that point. You know? I think you know when you have one of these tests that come out and people hear about it and it makes the news. No matter what happens, even if it was a false positive or whatever, there's still going to be an element of, well, maybe he's cheating. You know, people, no matter what happens, and that's too bad for Canelo and anybody who may be innocent, but when it comes out right away. For for the rest of his career, he has to be careful, you know. Let, let's take, like, Anderson Silva example. The first time he tested positive, we were like, oh, maybe it's because of his leg, you know, mm. he he had to come back. Second time he tested positive, we're like, hey, okay, this guy's cheating now. So, And then you wonder about his whole life and his whole career. Was he cheating the whole time? Exactly. So Canelo right now, you know you're getting the benefit of the doubt. Don't, yeah. get, don't get caught a second time. That's, that's all I'm going to say. Well, he's going to back himself up by, like, he's going to move his whole training camp to the state. So, like, he, that's part of his, yeah. I'm going to stay away from the meats from Mexico and whatnot and make my camp in the U.S., and, and we'll see what happens. But, you know, time will tell, right? But he's a multimillionaire, so do, do you really accept, like, you know, you got to be careful with, with your whole training camp, your diet and all that, so. But it's Look, hard, Fred. We talked about yeah, this last as, time, Yeah, but as we right? said, we know about it. Like, right. he's not the first. So if you're a, a fighter and you know that these issues might happen and you're a multimillionaire, well, take the steps to make sure yeah. that you're not testing positive. You got to watch out for everything, even the meat that you're eating. You got to make sure maybe you just, uh, when you're a multimillionaire fighter, you just uh, have your own farm and your own slaughterhouse. And I mean, you just have to he probably has his own chef. Come on. I just eat a Burger King. But either or, like when it comes down to it, it's so hard. It's so hard to like, <laughs> to like, It, it, it keeps changing all the time. Like, yeah. like all drugs, this is illegal and that's illegal. It keeps changing. So how do you monitor that? I think we can all agree, though, that we would like this fight on May the 5th to go down, Canelo versus Gennady, because the last time was a travesty and the judges, for some reason, scored it for uh, a draw, right? When uh, Golovkin obviously won. So they're going to do it again. They're going to run it back. Anthony, come on now. No, 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 no. I, I know no, he won. Triple done. G won. We're done. We're done, Anthony. Thank Anthony, you. Anthony, last question is uh, chicken burger or Whopper? Ooh. Whopper, man. Yeah, Whopper. Whopper! Man, Whopper! Uh, okay, on a serious note, though, just before we go, I want to wish our buddy Wally out in Ireland uh, speedy recovery. He's going through some health things. I'm not sure exactly what's going on with him, and I hope he's all right. So our buddy Wally going through some things out in Ireland. I know you're listening, buddy, and I hope that uh, everything turns out all right for you. We're all thinking about you. Do it for McGregor, Wally. Do it for McGregor. Just do it for you, man. Do it for you. The spirit of the Ireland. We're behind you, buddy, 100%. RingsideReport.net is our website. Follow Fred on Twitter at MMA. Follow Anthony, even. You can follow him on Twitter at Dane Brook. Danny Brook. Yeah, but the way you spell it is wrong. It's just too it's much, man. It's called Danny Brook, man. Like, There's a reason for that. I say Freddy, Freddy MMA. I don't have to spell it out. With your Twitter, I have to spell it out. Sick of it. Spell it, man. Get a new Twitter. No, no, no. Danny Brooks. Anthony D. Okay? <laughs> just get that now. You could change just the handle. Yeah. You don't even need a new Twitter. No, man. There you go. Danny Brooks. At Dave Simon MMA. You can follow me. See, you don't have to spell that out. It's clear. It's easy. Ringsideport.net, the <laughs> website, of course. Tomorrow night, we'll be back for Wrestling Uncensored. Well, they won't be back. I'll be back, and Johnny North will be here with me for Wrestling Uncensored. We'll be back here next week. For more Ringside Report Radio, for Fred Garcia and Anthony D'Alessio, I am Dave Simon. Thanks for listening. This has been Ringside Report Radio.